No, thanks. I'm driving. Can I come over and see Nader today? Your cat sucker anytime you want. Don't your parents mind? Look, your father has an allergy to cats. My father has an allergy to plants. Parents understand parents. Great. Anyways, we've become so attached to Nader, I don't think we'd give her back to you even if your father's allergy went away. Why do you do that? Because it's there. Dinky, I made you a nice casserole this morning so you can warm it up in the microwave oven. And I won't be home tonight, so I baked you those as a special treat. Let me have a couple. Hmm? Oh, no, dear, I don't need all those. Just a couple will do. I don't think your father will be home either, so when you see him, please tell him that I'm at the Red Cross, then save our rivers, and then muscular dystrophy, after which I hope I'll be home. Mom, I had a history report to be done in two weeks, and I thought you were going to help me with it. Oh, well, we'll do it this weekend, dear. I promise we'll spend some time together then. Well, can Packer stay for dinner? Oh, well, I think tomorrow night would be better. I know, why don't you two come to the meeting, the Families Against Drugs, with me, and then I'll bring you back afterwards, okay? Fine. I don't really need these. Does this mean we're engaged? Oh, you. <laughs> Come on. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye. You know, my mother says that when your mother dies, they're going to bury her at a meeting. Yeah, maybe then she'll stop long enough to talk to me. Now, tomorrow we're going to be talking about heroin, the worst drug of them all. It's also called horse and smack. But whatever name the drug is known by, it is something to be avoided. It's the enemy. It's uh, something to fight against. You do see By the time now, your mother moves on to her next right, worthy cause, the whole town's gonna know junky jargon as well as the alphabet. Don't make anything any better. Just make it worse. Something to fight against. The real meaning of addiction is that you turn to poison to bring you out of your misery. And then the poison becomes a problem. And you just keep getting in deeper and deeper until there's no way out. And it doesn't only have to be drugs. It can be anything. Come on, man. That's a girl. What's wrong with her? She won't even move. Well, the chicken like in front of her. She'll move. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Before she came to live here, she was a bionic cat. Look. I've tried not to say this, because I don't think it's any of my business. Maybe it's not. Why don't you put on another record? 
What I mean is this. Just because you're charmingly chubby doesn't mean Nader has to be, too. She's got her own problems. She doesn't deserve yours. No one deserves my problems. Want to see Nader move? <laughs> Well, aren't you going to put on another record? Why don't you shake the covers at it? Maybe it'll turn over by itself. Nader! Here, Nader. Here, girl. that incredible creature. Well, that's my cousin Natalia. She's staying with us till the end of the year. She's all right. She doesn't talk much, that's all. Then again, she doesn't wear a size 20 dress. You know, Nader, you look like you could use a drink. How about a little root beer, huh? <laughs> you have a nice laugh, you know that? You want to go with me? One more time. What she like? I told you this is a blind date, remember? Blind? But not deaf and dumb, too. Tell me something about her. All right. Um, she's intelligent. Huh? She gets good grades, mostly A's. She collects all kinds of tropical fish. Good, good. What else? What do you want out of my life? <laughs> Come on. I could have stayed home and spent the night arguing with my father. <sighs> OK. She likes to jog. Yeah? Yeah, at least I've seen her doing it a lot. And? And she likes Led Zeppelin and Mozart. Fine, fine. Now, tell me what she looks like. Here we are. Oh, evening, Tucker. Good evening, Mr. Hawker. Hello, Tucker. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hawker, Dinky's parents. This is P. John Knight, Dinky's date. Nice to meet you. Hello. Yeah, now, we'd, uh, we'd like to have the girls back by 12. Should we synchronize our watches, huh? Oh, I don't have mine. Kid stole it last week. Creep. Oh. Well, it was probably a disadvantaged ghetto youth. Oh, of course. The only reason he stole it was so he could sell it and give the money to charity. Oh, P. John, nobody wants to steal. The way he acted off my wrist, you could have fooled me. I've got a watch. Oh, here they are. Come on, darling. Natalia Line, P. John Knight. Hello. Uh, Dinky Hawker, P. John Knight. Hello. Natalia Line, Dinky Hawker. Dinky Hawker, Natalia Line. <laughs> Mr. Hawker, Mrs. Hawker. Hawker. Mrs. Hawker, Mr. Hawker. Ah, <laughs> uh, Natalia, say the secret word and you'll win $200. I'll hope you spend it all on me. Let's go. <laughs> May I? You must have another name besides Stinky, don't you? Susan. Stinky is our affectionate name for her. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. Shall we go, Susan? What do you suppose he meant by that? I think we've just been told off. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder where they are. Hope I didn't 
make a mistake introducing them. What are they going to have to talk about? Food. Will you look at that? Coffee shake will be right up. Okay. Oh, may I? I'd like to make a little toast. Mm -hmm. To the thin person inside every fountain. Mm -hmm. Susan and I are starting a diet next week. For real. How about that? Great. That's terrific. So much easier when you have somebody else to diet with. Well, uh, she's the perfect person to diet with. Uh, no offense. A little more. No, no, too much. Half of that. I don't have a smaller piece. Oh, yeah. oh. Mm -hmm. There we go. Voila. My hero. Hi, Dickie. Hi. Oh, hello, dears. Oh, where does the time go? It's dinner time already. We just finished painting the fence at the settlement house. Pete John and I prepared the whole thing. Papa's sitting at the table already. Yes, dear, I saw him. Man, you guys look weird weighing everything that way. Pa, oh, it's a simple equation. You don't put the calories in, you don't put the calories on. Right. There are legal foods we can't eat and illegal ones we can't. <laughs> Oh, don't talk to me about anything illegal. Your mother got me out of all that. Oh, thank you, Marcus. Would you mind putting the paint in the basement before you go? Sure. Come on now, darlings. Hurry up. Your father's very hungry. You're so impatient with us, Mr. Parker. How come you're never impatient with Marcus and his friends? Oh, there's so little time. You and Dinky have everything you need. And I think it's only fair that I give my time to children who really need my help. But you give them more than mere time. Ah, that's the secret of giving. Do you have to be so impatient with us, with Susan? You mean about her diet? Oh, come on now. Aren't you just making a big fuss about a little baby fat? The fat baby goes into the fat adult, Mrs. Hawker. Huh. Well, six pounds so far, Mama. What did you say, dear? Did you lose something? I just write it on a note, leave it on my bedside table, and I'll buy you another. I hoped you weren't going to be in here, but I knew you were. Want some? Susan, the trouble with us fat people is that we're just too good-natured. Nobody thinks we have any problems besides just being eaten too much and overweight. Susan, don't let it get you down.
useful and go in the kitchen and get the snacks ready. The legal stuff looks better than the illegal. I guess crime doesn't really pay. Never. And the legal stuff pays better, too, once you get used to it. I've lost five pounds already. Susan's lost more than six. That's great. What about the, uh, the baby fat and the glandular problems? Fat is fat. Pretty names are just parents' excuses for bringing up fat kids. I don't think Dinky's parents believe they're doing that. You know, if Susan was a snackhead like those losers out there, instead of a sugar junkie, you can bet they'd be doing a lot more than just making excuses. Uh, Pete John, if you'd like to join the discussion, why don't you join the group? No way. My outlook on life is light years away from theirs. Are you sure you really know anything at all about their outlook on life? I know enough about their outlook to know that I'm going to keep my money in my shoe. You know, we like you, P. John, but we don't like your cynicism. And I don't think Dinky likes it either. Um, your daughter's name isn't Dinky, Mrs. Hawker. Your daughter's name is Susan. Hmm. You really know how to make an impression. What was that all about? P. John was just practicing diplomacy. I was just setting your mother straight on something. Where's Natalia? Oh, she's upstairs. The reverse session was too much for her. I'll go see how she is. Want me to do something? Mm -hmm. Put those things in those bowls if you want. Ah-ha! Uh -huh. Da-da-da-da-da-da! Mm -hmm. Marcus's mother just got out of the hospital. The first thing she did was bake us a cake. Isn't that nice? Well, how is she? Oh, okay, ma'am. Uh, she says she wants to celebrate with the family. So I guess this means you, too. Thanks, but Susan and I can't have any. Well, uh, speak for yourself, P. John. I don't think that one piece of cake on a special occasion is going to hurt anything. Come on, Dinky. My mom made it special. Susan doesn't eat chocolate anymore. Well, Dinky does. Please, dear. It's very important to me. Just at least taste the cake. I don't eat chocolate anymore, Mother. Well, make believe it's vanilla. Oh, don't be a jerk. What's the matter? My mom's cake not good enough for you people? You are a jerk. You're gonna eat this. Oh, Blame Helen. I'm sure P. John knows what he's done. Flash, I went to the concert last night with P. John. Who cares? He hasn't called me in a month. He's lost 30 pounds since you saw him. His father's lost 15. Well, maybe my mother was right. What do you mean? All he wanted to do was be a hero and make me spin. He's really looking great. Good for him. Now, get off my case. Fine. All right, and don't forget the candy cane. Just a minute. Hmm. Goodbye, darling. Will you be late? No. But, well, if I am, I'll call you. <laughs> right. Have a good time. Thank you. That's right. All right, now let me just run through this one point. I got an A on my history paper, Daddy. Only one in the hey, class. Hey, terrific. That's wonderful. Show it to your mother. Good. Yes, Mr. Moretti, and the whole order goes to the Families Against Drugs Christmas Party. Then that's all correct. And you know where it should be sent. Yes. Oh, that's wonderful, darling. No, no, not you, Mr. Moretti. No, I'm talking to my daughter. Yes. All right, fine. Well, then we'll look for the delivery. 
Thank you. Merry Christmas to you, too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, that's just grand. Aren't you going to read it? Well, I don't have time right now. Uh, put it on the table beside my bed, and I'll get to it this weekend. Where's Natalia? She's upstairs in her room, I guess. Why? Is she alone? She's with Tucker, I guess. They're together all the time. Well, I better put a stop to that. You're not doing anything wrong. Please, Dinky. While Natalia is here, I am responsible for her. So you let me decide what's right and what's wrong. And no grown-up will ever understand that this is a matter of so much importance. Come in, Dinky. Tucker. Natalia, may I speak to Tucker privately for a moment, please? Turn off the stereo and take the cat with you. Sit down, Tucker. Tucker, lately you've become involved with Natalia, haven't you? Involved? Oh, Tucker. Natalia's a very special girl. She's very precious to us. I don't want anything to happen that's going to cause problems. There won't be any problems with Natalia, Mrs. Hawker. But I wouldn't be too sure about Dinky. What about Dinky? Can't you see? She's hooked on sweet the same way Marcus used to be hooked on smack. I wouldn't worry about Dinky, Tucker. There's nothing wrong with Dinky that a little self-control won't cure. If you really believe that, Mrs. Hawker, then you're worrying about the wrong girl. Merry Christmas. So you were real lucky that she got invited after what you said to Mrs. Hawker. I sent some flowers. <laughs> oh, God, from my parents. <laughs> anyway. Natalia must have let them know she wanted me. Lucky. How about you? Oh, I'm doing okay. My father's out of town. Oh, that's tough. No, no, really, it's, it's better this way, you know? He's gone off his diet again. So where are you gonna eat? Oh, I think tonight I'm gonna get a little crazy. We'll have a spaghetti dinner. Alone? No. There are lots of people in restaurants. You want me to go with you? Well, you wouldn't be able to give my present to Susan, then, would you? It'll be the first thing I do. Okay. I promise. Merry Christmas, everybody. Hello, oh, Tucker. Merry Christmas. Good, come on in. Well, Merry now we're Christmas. all here. The kids can open their presents, huh? Oh, good. Well, let him get settled first, John. Well, now, go on, sit down. Let's Thank you. this envelope. <laughs> Well, Dink, Merry Christmas. This is for you, Dinky. Sorry, Tucker, I didn't get you anything. I was saving for something special. Story of my life. But it's really not for me, I'm just the courier. I know who it's from. Open it up, dear. I don't want to open it here. Oh, please, go ahead, open it. Now, we all know that it's from your friend, P. John, and we want to see what it is. It's a book. Oh, the Think Thin Cookbook. How romantic. How nice. A Come cookbook. <laughs> yeah, oh, that reminds me. I've got a turkey in the oven. <laughs> Save your appetite. Read the card, dear. Dear Susan, remember inside every fat person, there's a thin person trying to get out. Merry Christmas to the thin, thin Susan. Love, P. John. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess he is a good friend of yours, isn't he? After all, despite everything. Give this to P. John, okay? Sure. And Tom, thanks for the book. What is that, dear? Just a present. Well, I can see it's a present. What is it? Something he needs. Well, I assume it's something he needs. Um, may I see it, please? Dinner! Do you 
you're spending your allowance on a boy that I have forbidden you to see, I think I have a perfect right to know what you're buying. Well, that's beautiful. Where did you get the money for this? Snacks I didn't buy. Oh, you never gave up a snack in your life. Uh, dinner, everybody. What do you think I got it then? You think I stole it? I thought you'd give me a little more credit than that. I am your daughter, you know. Oh, you dare. Helen. Dickie, Dickie, please, please. Mom didn't mean it. Are you okay? Helen, oh. you struck her out of anger. You should never strike out of anger. Well, well let's, uh, let's see what's in the envelope, huh? Oh, Dear Helen Hocker, in grateful appreciation for your years of service and dedication, Families Against Drugs is proud to name you the recipient of its first annual Neighbor of the Year Award. May God bless you and your loving family. Friends, the woman we honor tonight, I give you Helen Hocker. Thank you all very, very much. Oh, thank you so much. That's very touching. <laughs> thank you all. Families against drugs. The operative word there is families. Our programs are strong because our community is strong. And our community is strong because our families are strong. So really, when I help someone, anyone, anywhere, I'm really only helping my own family. Again, I, I thank you very, very much. It's very touching. <laughs> thank you. And now we've decided to use our solid old brick wall here for a plaque which will permanently honor each year our neighbor of the year. So, Helen, if you would please stand, and Mr. Hawker, if you would help me do the honors. Thing for Dinky, you threw him out when you did. Well, I didn't think he'd do this to us. If I get my hands on him, I'll break his neck. Oh, no, John. Well, at least I can call the police commissioner and see that he gets what's coming to him. Oh, well, wait, don't you think you ought to call his father first? No way. Get me the police department. Yes, I certainly do consider it an emergency. Thank you. John. Look. Oh. How could she have done this to us? After all we do for her. Oh, it's like a slap in the face. Exactly. Dinky. Oh, Dinky. 
sorry, Daddy. I'll clean it all up. I was angry. She hurts me, Daddy. She thinks she's given me everything, but she hasn't. Because... Because she never has enough time for me. And I know her projects are important to her, but I need her too. She doesn't understand that. Thank you. Susan. Thank <laughs> you. 